my name is Erin Bodwin, and this is my series on light. So light is one of the most interesting things in the universe because it acts as both a particle and a wave. And some other waves, like sound, need a medium to travel on, which means that they travel via particles, compressing. And since there's not enough particles in space, sound can't actually travel in space. But we know that light can because we see the light from other galaxies and we see the light from stars in our galaxy. And so light is what's called an electromagnetic wave, which means that it doesn't need a medium to travel on. And mediums, like water and air, can actually slightly slow it down. So you've probably heard Roy G. Biv before. And if you haven't, what it is is the order of colors in a rainbow. Red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, and violet. And what a rainbow is is a separation of different wavelengths or frequencies of light emitted by the sun. The sun emits all the colors in a big bundle. And contrary to when you mix paint together, when you mix all the colors of light together, you get white. And what you might not actually know is that there is a lot more to the electromagnetic spectrum than we can see. So we use this tool called a prism to separate different wavelengths of light. And in 1800, Sir Frederick Herschel decided to investigate the temperature of the different colors emitted by the sun when light passed through a prism. And so he took a bunch of thermometers whose bulbs he blacked out to better absorb heat with, and he placed them in the different colors, and he placed one just past the violet end of the spectrum and just past the red end of the spectrum. Sir Frederick Herschel observed that the temperature of the thermometer in the color was greater than um, the controls and that the temperature increased from the colors violet to red. But what he didn't expect was from the thermometer placed just outside the red light, which was actually hotter than the thermometer in the red. And so he dubbed this radiation calorific rays, and we now call this infrared radiation. And it can be reflected, refracted, transmitted, and absorbed, just like any other kind of light that we can see. In 1801, Johann Ritter conducted an experiment to investigate the existence of energy just past the violet end of the visible spectrum. He knew that photographic paper would turn black more rapidly in blue light than red light because blue light has a higher frequency. So he exposed the photographic paper to light just beyond the violet end of the spectrum, and sure enough, the paper turned black more rapidly, proving the existence of ultraviolet light. In this diagram, you can see wavelengths getting longer moving to the right and shorter moving to the left. And as you can see, Roy G. Biv is only a fraction of the entire electromagnetic spectrum. And the sequence of longest wavelength radio waves to shortest wavelength gamma rays is also a sequence of lowest energy to highest energy. Waves can transport energy. The energy transported by a radio wave is very low, while the energy transported by a gamma ray is high and very dangerous, too. So in the next video, we're going to take all the knowledge we have learned today and apply it to how our atmosphere works, blocking out different wavelengths of light or keeping in different wavelengths of light, and why different animals can see more or less of the spectrum than us, and basically light on Earth. See you next time. Thank you for watching.